8 minutes of 8th. Episode 2, Basic Concepts. Episode 2, Basic Concepts. Hi, I'm Ron Aaron. I'm the creator of 8th. If you haven't already downloaded 8th and set it up, please do so now so you can follow along as we go through this tutorial. So, this tutorial is about the basics, the very basics. First, what is what is 8th like? It's not like C, it's not like Perl, it's not like Python, it's not like Java. What it is like is a language called Forth, which was created in the late 70s to control um, telescopes. One of the features of Forth is that it's a very small language. The syntax is anything separated by a white space. Um, unlike most other languages, it doesn't have a very complicated syntax. Eighth specifically uh, builds on the legacy of fourth in that it also uses anything separated by white space. However, it uses the JSON syntax for declaring data. So you can declare arrays and objects and strings and so forth in the way that you would with JSON. One of the features of fourth like languages is immediate feedback. So unlike C or Java, you don't have to go through a compile and link cycle, you simply run your code and you get immediate feedback. In order to be different, in fourth-like languages we call functions, what you're used to calling functions or, or procedures in other languages, they're called words in eighth or in other fourths. And the reason they're called words is because anything separated by a white space can be a function name. So we call them words. Data, instead of being passed as in parameter lists from function to function, and instead of being returned in return values from a function, we simply use something called the stack. What that means is that you push data onto the stack from one word, and you pop it off to consume it in another word. Eighth, unlike standard fourths, has a great many built-in data types, which we call classes, just to make things a little bit more confusing if you're coming from C++ or Java. They're classes in a, in a very weak sense. In any event, when we start up 8th, immediately it tells us what version it is and so forth. That may or may not be interesting to you at the moment. Let's create a new word. We do that with the semicolon word. and We can say hi hello, dot means print, cr is carriage return, semicolon ends the, ends the new word. So you start a word with a, with a colon, you terminate it with a semicolon. Now we wrote that all in one line with just one space between each element on the line. You could put a million spaces in there, it really makes no difference to eighth. For that matter, let's do high too. Now, it didn't look like we were creating two different words, but we did. When we type in hi, we get hello, which is what we expect because that's what we declared here. When we type in hi two, we see hi hi. Note that even from the, from the console, even though eighth is printing OK in between each uh, each line, because that's its response to a line, it knows that everything after the semicolon and everything after the colon until the semicolon is part of the same word. Okay, so far so good. Now we'll notice something else. We typed again, sem uh, colon, high two, high. What that means is we created a new word, new word called hi2, which is the same name as the word that we created before, and it returns the value, it, it invokes the previously created word hi. So when we type hi2, we'll get exactly the same thing as if we type hi, simply because hi, the new hi2 is just invoking the original hi word. The previously defined hi2 word is no longer available to us from the interpreter because we overwrote it meaning to say the dictionary can't find it anymore. However, the code for it still exists. So if we used it somewhere, we can, it, that code is still extant and can be invoked. 
Now then, let's quit out, start up again, and try high. What happened? Eighth is telling us it's unable to find the word high. Why is that? It's because Eighth does not store the words that we create and so forth from an interactive session from one to the other. If we want to save stuff from one session to another, our better choice is to simply put the words we want inside of a piece of text, a text file. So here you see this is a comment. Anything beginning with a backslash is considered to be a comment. A new word called hi, which prints the string hi there. Another a word called bye bye, which invokes hi and then does bye. So if we want to, to run this, we can do this. Eighth, either with a dash f or without a dash f. Usually I don't use a dash f. Sample eighth. And you notice it didn't do anything. Why didn't it do anything? Because we did not invoke anything. We simply declared the words. So now let's, if we type hi, we get hi there. If we type bye bye, I'm sorry, I didn't type it right. Bye bye. Uh, let me show you another thing. So by pressing the up and down arrows, we can go through the history. You can use the arrow keys to go over where I want. Edit the thing, and there we go. So these are the very, very basic operations that you want to be able to do. Create a new word, invoke it. You should go through the manual and find out what words are available. Of course, Eighth will tell you what words are available. And you can get help on words by simply typing help and the name of a word. So let's say help by. Well, the description is rather terse. Quit Eighth, but that's all it does. So there's not much more to say. You can also say help, for example, n plus, and it'll tell us add n and m, leaving the sum on TOS. TOS stands for top of stack, which is the uppermost item on the stack. In our next episode, we'll discuss the different data types and how to use them. In the meantime, I suggest again that you go back to the manual and review it. And in our next episode, we'll make use of what you've learned from the manual. Bye for now.